Hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to do an album review on Against All Logic, aka AAL's 2012 to 2017. Well, that is a quick <laughs> intro. I I didn't really have um have a specific intro for today, so um Anyway, um, I'm going to be doing an electronic album review. Isn't that surprising? So yeah, I'm actually doing a review on an electronic album. So before I start off, I'm going to talk about my past experiences on electronic music. In fact, it's not even past experience. It's more like for the whole time. Um, I am always not impressed with... Um, most of the mainstream electronic pop EDM music right now and uh, I think they're very cheap they're very lazily written they are very um, I guess immature and brainwashing and um, I, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it there are a few albums electronic albums out there in the mainstream right now that are actually good such as um, Daft Punk Random access memory, and also a, a few, but um overall, I, I I'm not huge on electronic music, and then last year I started listening to Sinjin Hawk's first opus, Four Swords, Compassion, and uh, Igloo Ghost, Neo Wax Bloom, and they're all very mind bending, twisting, wonky very experimental and abstract electronic music that I couldn't handle the first time I've listened to it. So, um, I wasn't too big on those three albums. I do kind of enjoy them, though, um, but I'm just not too huge on them. But this album, this album completely blew my expectations out of the water. <laughs> I have never expected myself liking an electronic album that much in such a short period of time like even for Aphex Twin like it took me a, a lot of listens to completely enjoy Aphex Twin selected Ambient Works album so yeah 2012 to 2017 what a straightforward title and it's this album that's been in the works for quite a long time in fact five years and it is in the record label others people and it is ran by no one but Nicholas Jar who is one of the best electronic producers in the 2010s if not the best um so uh wow like I'm so glad that I've actually listened to this album so um yeah this album does justice to house music and electronic music in general it is very cutting edge transcendent it's very futuristic it's very funky cerebral but also very groovy and dancey it has some really soulful and ambitious samples all the way from soul to funk to some pop too and uh, it has some grand and braggadocious horns and synths and it has some monstrous round bouncy and bombastic bass that has a higher frequency than the melody in the songs and man this this album you know there is not a single moment in this album where I feel it's just overly repetitive or redundant I was actually hooked every single minute of the album so um <laughs> I'm I'm just super impressed so uh, the album starts off with with this old house is what I have, which is absolutely stunning. At first, it's this very fuzzy sample in, in the background and these vocals are muzzled, muttered, fuzzy and then it gets louder and more intense and it kind of builds suspense and then 
it hits the drop and we enter the world of Nicholas Nicholas Jar's electronic album this one and uh, that is a brilliant way to start off an album in my opinion and it's like I wasn't huge on like drops in electronic tracks but this is a great drop I mean once we enter the song once the intro is finished and we have passed the drop it gets very relaxing and groovy and dancey and um you know in in the mainstream electronic music uh usually we get these huge overly dramatic drops and then after the drop we get this super like super staccato dry ragged loud dramatic and pretentious just bass just the kind of bass that would rape your ears <laughs> uh but this one this one is truly a cerebral and intellectual and a great and relaxing and fun way to put a drop in a song and it's it's done well uh, and then we have uh, the second track i never dream which has these cascading vocal cuts that goes in and out of each other in between beats and it's super i guess it's super mind-boggling in a sense and uh it goes together really well and then it bleeds into these blissful synths and um again it's also super dancey cutting edge and um i like it and then the third track is some kind of game Man, um, I talked about this in the Things video, I put it in my best tracks because it's really good and to be honest, this is probably the best electronic track of the year so far. I'm not even exaggerating, nope. And uh, we, we have these soulful vocals in this track and mixing with some hypnotic mashing, flourishing pianos and these up and down beats that goes up and down pretty self-explanatory and uh, this mixture of sounds is just so sweet to the ears just so satisfying it becomes such a fun and and this is also the kind of electronic track that you would put behind a montage it's a really great song for a montage you know, I, I really like making and editing montages, so I pay attention to a lot of music, which are great for montages. The fourth track is Hopeless, which has these eerie, ominous synths and these chill melodies. And then towards the, like, into the track, we have these weird shots of percussion just going here and there, and um, it... It makes this song sounds more, I guess, more atmospheric, and it sounds like it is recorded in some strange place, and it just makes the appeal of this song way more outstanding. And, uh, the fifth track is No You. <laughs> And the first time I've listened to this song, I wasn't a huge fan of it because it sounds super goofy and poppy and blunt and honest with with its vocals. I got to get to know you much better. But the more I listen to it, the more I fall in love with this track. It has this bouncy, goofy, funky vocal sample and beat. And it also has this disco vibe that's super groovy. And then after the vocal section, we move on to the electronic core part, which is super groovy. Da, 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 da. And um, what's so impressive about this little electronic section, it's that um, it sounds like a a a very you know a very trashy 
YouTube intro music for like a gaming video for like nine year old or ten year olds you know you know those YouTube intros those very bombastic and pretentious you know slow motion cartoons of texts just bouncing in your face like it but except this song this section sounds like a YouTube intro but it is like a hundred a thousand a million times better than those shit YouTube intros and um, that's what I really like about this section it's like something that I would normally hate turning into something that I absolutely love the next track is such a bad way and it is probably the most underwhelming track on the album not that it's bad but it's probably the most lo-fi and the most predictable track out of all the tracks in this album and it is it is a pretty mild song it is not as memorable or as exciting so you know we cool and then we have city fade which is absolutely genie genius genie genius that's what i'm trying to say This track has this very innocent and honest but also tense piano chord intro that also builds quite an amount of tension and uh, it again it's pianos but it's also electronic house music and both elements of music just goes really well together just accompanying with each other real well as we move into the core part of the track. And then after the intro is finished, we get into the core part, and it is a it is a passage that is stringed together by Nicholas Jar, and it is super groovy and jammy. You just cannot deny how danceable and fun this song is. Like, and 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 the vocal sample it's it's in German. Vagging nicht die Stadt. Die Stille nur, nur ich glaube. Okay, that is probably my extent of German. I suck at German, okay? I, I don't even speak the language. I'm just reading off from from these words. Ah, but uh, it, bas it basically means, you know, how far this city reaches and um, city fade. So there you go. And then next up, we have Now You Got Me Hooked, because this album really got me hooked. And uh, this track shows us that um, Nicholas Jar is super inventive and smart when it comes to sampling songs. The way he sampled the song is unlike any way you would expect it he found a sound palette that normally people wouldn't care for in the song and built an entire groove around that little palette around that little section and now we have a brand new track that sounds almost completely different from the original sample and props to you mr nicholas jar <laughs> yeah, like he just found another alternative way to to sample basically and um, Man, he's just so good at picking sound palettes. He's just so smart and yeah This track also feels super blissful and fun and hopeful and then as we transition into the middle of the song we have these bombastic braggadocious bass that have frequency even higher than the melody itself and it's just boom 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 and uh, that is truly memorable also really danceable and then we have flash in the pan which is basically a full-on percussion or or beat track and uh, I guess it's a little dry but 
you know that's kind of the point and the beats produced is just really well done really nicely produced really well cut and shaven next track is you are going to love me and scream and uh we have this intro that is super entrancing and moody and it has a sad vibe to it a little bit and um we also have this static buzzing quality in the start that also builds the tension. And then again, there's a drop in this track. I am so happy that there's a drop. And then this drop, just like the, the, the album opener, this, dra this drop builds the tension up really high and then when it drops it blows into this super chill but also dancey groovy and well contained um i guess instrumentals and uh that is a super impressive drop i'm gonna tell you that and then the last track which is the album ender is titled rave on you and this is basically a nine minute long simplistic but also very cerebral and smart and this track also feels super futuristic and it also has these really round melodies and bass and overall it creates this very soothing feeling that is really cool and it also has this lcd sound system vibe to it as well as an aphex twin vibe to it and uh, yeah, this is a genius album ending, and um, it wraps up the album really well. So overall, this is a great album. I have never expected myself to like an electronic album that much again. And all the tracks on this album are very fluid, but also cinematic, theatrical, and uh, they're also very engaging, fun, groovy, fancy danceable, transcendental, futuristic, and extremely cutting edge. And um, it doesn't have any redundant or repetitive moments on here. It doesn't have any cheap or dumb or moronic moments on here. Phone is ringing. And uh, I just can't stop comparing this album to a lot of mainstream stuff nowadays because it doesn't sound like any of the mainstream stuff nowadays at all. You know, a lot of the mainstream electronic music, especially those pop EDM tracks, um, that gets millions and billions of views on YouTube, they usually use these cheap and repetitive and unoriginal motifs, and these beats, their beats are also very, um, very dry and painfully boring, and usually the drops are overly dramatic and kind of pretentious. And overall the tracks just feel like a a, a great idea. But it, it, it just falls flat completely. But this album completely defies that. And blew me away. So the worst track is Such a Bad Way. And the best track here is... Well, it's, um, um, it's really hard to pick one, but I'll go with some kind of game. I'll give Against All Logic, aka AAL, aka Nicholas Jars, 2012 to 2017, a 9 out of 10. Yep, an electronic album got a 9. So, have you listened to this album from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more.